It's uh, Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024. We'll call the regular city council meeting to order. Would everyone please rise for the invocation given by Councilman Curley, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we once again thank you for allowing us to meet together to discuss our beautiful city of East Point, what we should do, what we shouldn't do, and be with all of us, uh, the council, the elected officials, the administration, and certainly the citizens of our city. And we ask that you would be with all those who are unable to be here tonight because there's something wrong with them. So we ask that you could heal them and uh, be with them as much as possible. We ask all these things in your son's holy name, Jesus the living Christ, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic Thank you, everyone. And the first thing we're going to start off with is we have a presentation from Ms. Yay, Frederick <laughs> from Rare again. Hello. That was an awesome welcome, so thank you. <laughs> Hope everyone had a nice holiday weekend. Um, over at Rare, we uh, did our annual shutdown for two weeks at the end of August after summer day camp and all our um, events have ended. Um, where we do a deep clean of the building and everything and reorganize things, put some new stuff in and get refreshed and everything for the start of fall. So um, I'm here tonight to talk about um, some of our upcoming new fall programs, um, what to expect, important dates, and um, also some highlights from this past summer. So this is um, one of the um, important dates. Um, myself and a couple of my colleagues are all going to be going to the East Point and Roseville open houses in the next few weeks. Uh, we got magnets uh, made with this, um, I guess, image on it um, with big important dates and um, the QR code to register for our programs that we're going to be passing out to the families. Um, our big one for the families coming up is a rare nightmare that's on Friday, October 25th. Uh, we do pre-sale for those, uh, that registration for that event. Um, it is inside at the Recreation Authority Center. Um, we do a magician show. We have uh, pumpkin decorating. We do a trick-or-treat trail. Um, we do a bunch of games and crafts and everything for the kids. Um, so we like it because it's indoors, so we don't have to worry about inclement weather or anything. Um, it works out pretty well. So it's been uh, really great for the last few years. So we also have asked that... Uh, Local organizations and businesses uh, reach out to us to participate in the event um, with our um, bingo trick-or-treat trail. And then um, always um, annually the day after Halloween, um, we do our pumpkin roll down. That is a free event and it is at Spindler Park Sledding Hill and the kids just get to roll down their uh, carved pumpkins and see them get them smashed into pieces and see who can roll theirs the furthest. It's a really cute event. And then um, we have our 46th annual Big Bird Run coming up on Sunday, November 10th this year. And then um, we do have like uh, our winter sports leagues for volleyball and basketball doesn't start till January, but we do have some important dates on there of, of our early bird registration. And then um, also the final deadline for registration in December. With that early bird registration, it's a really great deal. You get $15 off per child um, for registering by November 10th. And then um, last, or second to last in there, is our very important person dance. Um, that is um, on Friday, December 13th. Um, that is for um, all families and everything, um, for kids to bring a special person, adult in their life, to uh, the family dance. Uh, last year was our first year um, having the VIP dance, and it went very well. We did sell out. We did like a glow theme for it. Uh, new this year, we are having it at Barrister Gardens um, out in St. Clair Shores, so that gives us the opportunity to have a little nicer space um, than our gymnasium, um, make it look a little bit more grand um, for the families, and also um, give us the opportunity to have more than 180 people at the event. So we love to see about 500 families come to it. So that would be amazing for us and for the community. And it's just a really nice night for all the families. And this year, the theme is going to be board games. So I think at our, with our staff, uh, 
We're gonna have centerpieces at each of the tables, they're all gonna be a different theme, have different board game activities and stuff at the dance for those. Kind of get a little tired of dancing. So that's what we got coming up this fall. And then um, I uh, spoke about this a couple months ago, but um, we have a couple, a, a lot of new programs um, that we are introducing this fall. Um, we have about, I wanna say six new um, classes for individuals with special needs. We've got a few youth um, enrichment classes. We got some new sports classes um, for the kids and then um, different uh, adult enrichment classes and exercise classes that we will be offering this fall. Um, within our newsletter, if you take a look at it, anything that has like a, a new on it um, would be on this list. And then that's a photo of the kangaroo, kangaroo jumps rebound class. So the instructor provides the shoes, I would say, um, and it's a form of exercise. It looks really fun. It's gonna be a drop-in class. So um, if you're able to do so, check it out. <laughs> And then just some highlights from this summer. Um, the top left photo is a picture of the kids um, at the Capitol from the summer day camp. Um, our camp received a grant through the Michigan Parks and Recreation Association and um, they were able to provide um, our camp uh, free transportation out to the Capitol for the day. So I believe it's in late June. Um, where the Capitol um, hosts a camp day for kids where they can come for free and do all these activities. So that was a picture from there. Um, the next photo down um, is our youth basketball league that we offered this summer for the first time. Um, we had 168 kids participate in the summer's basketball league. So we definitely anticipate on doing that for future years. And then um, our seniors had a lovely Christmas in July party at the bottom left. <laughs> and then top right is a Pride in the Park that was held at Veterans Memorial Park in Roseville. Um, we had a lovely evening um, that night um, for the families and had a lot of fun activities there. And then um, bottom right um, is just a little quick highlight from our Rock and Summer Night event. Um, th that is a picture of a couple girls after exiting the foam pit. Um, it was a Big hit for all the kids at the event. Um, Rock and Summer Night was a great event this year. Um, there was a lot of people there, um, a lot of city council and uh, members of City of East Point there, so it was awesome to see that. Um, everyone seemed to be enjoying the band a lot, and it was a lovely evening. So thank you all for those that were able to attend that event this year. And then, um, like I mentioned, our fall newsletter is available right now. You can find that on our website, um, follow us on Facebook, um, and then uh, my email and phone number is up there if you have any questions. But we're really trying to push a lot of the families to get registration in this week. Uh, we have a lot of great programs starting within the next couple weeks, so we want the families to be able to get registered in so we don't have to cancel any programs due to low registration. So trying to push that out there. So if you uh, can help us with that, we would greatly appreciate it. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> any oh, questions? I, if, I'm, if I might, Mayor. Um, Sarah, you are, you, are, you are an incredible young lady. You've got a lot of zippity doo dah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh, we, we need to be proud that you're with us. And, I, well, I'm sure I speak for everybody that we all hope that you're going to be here a long time. Oh, thank you. And yes. uh, thank you for your hard work <laughs> and your dedication. Oh, thank you. Okay. I appreciate it. I love working here. So I know you do. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Any questions? All right. Well, thank you all. Thank you. All right. You guys have a great evening. You too. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll move on to roll call. Please call the roll. Councilmember Baker? Here. Councilmember Curley? Here. Councilmember DeMonico? Here. Mayor Kleinfeld? Here. Councilmember Shadlick? Here. Do you mind if I um, close the screens out before they? Oh, that's fine. Go ahead. Approval of the agenda. Can I get a motion? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Oh. <laughs> um, 
I was wondering if we could uh, table one item on the agenda, the award of the uh, catch basin repair program contract. I have some questions I didn't quite have uh, time to ask about, and if I guess if the rest of council um, didn't mind, I'd, I'd motion that we approve the agenda um, with that item uh, tabled to the next meeting, next regular meeting. I'd support that. All right. Uh, any comments? Please call the roll. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Council Member Carterly? Yeah. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Council Member Shadlick? Yes. Council Member Baker? Yes. All right. Uh, hearing the public, the first hearing the public is now open. Would anyone wish to be heard? Hi, my name is Tammy Duffy. I'm a resident here at, at East Point. In the past couple of weeks, I've had some issues with priority waste. Um, I've talked to the ladies here in the office, and they've said that they have several issues, complaints, and so forth. And I was wondering if there was a way where I could opt out of the services or that our city contract could be reviewed for the matter of how many people um, are served because I am not being served the past two weeks and I am paying for a service that I have been unable to use the appropriate manners. Okay. We can't answer your question right now, but we can address it when we get to our comments. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. Mary Hall Rayford, East Point. A uh, few things I wanted to address. One, I want to bring your attention to the First Amendment Day party on Friday. I do apologize for getting the flyers out notices to you, but I have not been feeling well. It's been a struggle to do the little that I do. But at any rate, hopefully you'll be there. There is a QR code on the flyer. They're trying to use it to keep track of the number of people who are planning to attend so they can provide the best service possible for the number of people who attend. The other thing I wanted to discuss is um, we have a really important election coming up in November. I'm not advocating one party or the other, but we do need people to get out and vote. Uh, this is going to be extremely important, and it will have an impact on what happens in not only the city but in the country for the next 10 to 15 years, more than likely. On a personal note, and this has nothing to do with any of you, but I've been showing up at council meetings, I believe, since 2017, um, at which time I was appointed to ZBA. And to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, I have not disrespected anyone on the council. I've been very direct in my comments. But it would appear that there's an underlying problem I see developing in the city, and it needs to be addressed. I'm not trying to tell anybody who to vote for, who not to vote for, how to live their life. But at the same time, no one has the right to tell me the same thing either. And since I've been out in the public for a number of years, anytime someone wants to know anything about me or have anything to say about me, I would really appreciate people coming to me. I'm very open to talking to people. We usually have a breakfast once a month. It's advertised. I'm not running and hiding from anyone. This is just something that has to be said. The person that really needed to hear it is probably watching. They're not here. And I really didn't want to start a ruckus, a ruckus in the council meeting. But you know, when you try to do everything you can for other people, it's really difficult when people only want to deal with their issues of racism and try to pinpoint it on you. I love living here. I've always said that. That's not going seconds. to change. But I'm not going to change my mind about how I deal with things either. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? So there's quite a bit to address here. Um, and 
it has to do with um, police officers who are abusing their discretion and they use it as an excuse to not do their job. Um, and I don't appreciate the retaliation against me. It's completely unwarranted. They don't know the ordinances. Um, I've lost track how many times they've tried to cite the ordinance and they are so far off base, it's not even funny. I've had to correct them and tell them what the ordinances are. They don't know the laws and yet they're telling the nuisance tenants what the laws are. They are not attorneys. Stay in your own lane. There's only one attorney I know of on the police department and that's Chief Haynes. And if he chooses to give legal advice, he certainly is entitled to because he's also an attorney. The other officers who are not attorneys, stop giving out legal advice. You're giving out bad information. They've also done absolutely nothing to stop the trespassing on my property. I have a no trespassing sign in plain view. They make endless excuses and one of their favorite excuses is, well, they're not on your property anymore. Well, look at the criminal trespass statute. It clearly states when you tell somebody they're trespassing, get off of the property, it means just that. And when they refuse, they're trespassing. So it doesn't matter that when the police finally arrive, when you tell a trespasser, get off my property, you don't have to keep repeating yourself. But these nuisance tenants must be, I don't know, hard of hearing or just so flat out stupid and arrogant, they refuse to leave. And the officers do absolutely nothing to issue citations for trespass. We've got kids running wild up and down the street, violating the ordinances. You're not supposed to be walking in the street. You're not supposed to be playing ball in the street. There's trespass. There's the parental responsibility ordinance. None of this is being enforced. And I just want to point out that as I've had this discussion with Chief Haynes numerous times, this is not his fault. This department has been bad for a long time and it's not getting any better. I'm not their scapegoat, I'm not the problem. The problem is they're not doing their job and they need to stop retaliating against me. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Lisa Ivory's point resident. The first woman that was up here and was talking about the children's programs. About 25 years ago, I worked for the city of East Point uh, Community Development. And just a suggestion that maybe handing out tickets in the beginning of the year that children would get at school to take home to their parents and say, look, I have a free ticket for this. Might be an idea to bring more families into the fold. That's something that I know they're overwhelmed at the beginning of the year, but that is something that might help. Secondly, I have to admit, chief of police came in to a very bad situation. In 2021, I was bedridden most of the year, and I sat in my bed and I would hear shotguns all the time. And it's gotten better, and I thank you. And I hope it continues to get better. We also have to weed out, we can't just hire anyone. I had been calling since 2018 because of the signage. Talked to an officer Pruitt. Never met the man in person. Pulling into my own driveway, he gave me a ticket. I fought it in court and won. 
few months later, Officer Pruitt pulled my husband over in plain clothes in a regular car because of the way that Topher and Glander separated the corner and said to my husband, what's your problem? He says, why can't you just use your blinker? He said, you better watch what you say. I'm a police officer. I just want to say we need to be careful who we hire. We're a small community. We're a tight community. And let's keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Anyone else? Seeing none, the first hearing of the public is closed. Moving on to approval of minutes. Uh, can I get a motion for the minutes for August 13th, 2024? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would move that we approve the uh, minutes of the August 13th, 2024. Second that. All right. Please call the roll. Councilmember Curley? Yes. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Shadlick? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. All right, uh, moving on to item B, uh, minutes for August 20th, 2024. Mr. Mayor, I'll motion we approve the regular meeting minutes of August 20th, 2024. Support. Please call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Curley? Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Shadlick? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. All right, we have no scheduled hearings. Moving on to unfinished business. Uh, Award the 2024 to 2026 custodial services contract. Um, did anyone want to open up or make a motion on this? I'll make a motion, uh, Mr. Mayor. I'll move uh, that we award the 2024 custodial services contract to facilities 360 and further authorize the city manager to execute all necessary documents. Is there support? I'll support that. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear to where, who, who was getting the award. Facilities 360. Okay. It's the uh, recommendation from administration. Um, and by the way, thank you, uh, Ms. Walton, for sending out the additional info we requested. So, uh, Did anyone have any questions uh, for administration on this one? Uh, sure, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I've got at least maybe just one comment. I guess for future contracts, um, if we can, I guess is more of a comment than a question, if we can just loop city council in when there's, uh, I guess, like ongoing problems or it's enough where we need to sit down with a contractor, and if we can't get those resolved, that we work with you know our city attorney and make sure that we're um, getting everything that we have in a contract out of it. Um, I guess that that's basically it. So that we're not also um, surprised at a meeting um, when we're selecting a bidder that this has been going on. Understood. All right. Any other uh, comments or questions? I am, uh, again, I'm disappointed that we're not um, going with a local business. I, um, I know that we are all aware that McCoy is right there on Stevens, and they've been servicing our, um, our offices for years now. So um, I am disappointed that um, the recommendation is against them, just because they are a local business. Any other comments? Please call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember Shadley? No. Councilmember Curley? No. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. All right, moving on to reports from administration. Um, item A, uh, city manager's report, Ms. Walton. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, first is the really good news. Um, so after, uh, well, because we have lead lines, we are required to do testing. After our initial um, action level exceedance for lead, we were, were required to test um, 60 different homes with verified lead lines 
um, twice per year. Um, our testing for January to um, June 2024 came back and we did not exceed the action level, which is great news uh, for us here in East Point. Uh, we did have a training um, last week with the state of Michigan and the requirements for their get ahead of lead program, uh, which is where we receive our filters um, and replacement cartridges um, is being amended. Um, the restrictions uh, for handing the filters out require an individual to be on Medicaid, um, have children in the home or an individual that is pregnant. Um, and so we are waiting to receive all of the information um, to post for advertisements on all of our social media, our website, um, our lead safe page, um, as well as in our offices. Uh, once we receive that, we're expected to get that this week. Uh, we plan to post that and have that prepared for that program to go um, live and those restrictions to be active um, as of Monday. Uh, we are required by the state um, to mandate based on their requirements um, because they are the ones providing the filters. Uh, so we have asked questions and pushed back, um, but, and they will, uh, as of October 1st, be taking over the filters um, and be distributing um, them themselves. Um, we have a splash pad survey. Uh, we have a splash pad uh, coming in 2025. Uh, we needed some feedback from the community on interest, whether uh, regarding the theme, the different colors, just to see uh, what the community would like to see that splash pad look like. Um, and so we have a survey that is live now. We've posted it on our website, on social media, as well as in the constant contact. And so if you're interested in giving feedback on what that splash pad would look like, uh, we ask that you do, um, please take that survey within the next week and a half so that we can provide that feedback to city council um, so that we can move forward with preparing an RFP uh, for the expectation for the design um, of the splash pad. Um, we have new grills and mulch in the parks, uh, thanks to DPW. Uh, they've been working really diligently um, in the parks, especially after the holiday. Um, so if you're looking to do an after Labor Day um, grill, there are some new grills out there, as well as some mulch for the kids that are, that are out to play. Uh, we have a DDA concert series again uh, tomorrow. So if you're interested um, in attending a concert tomorrow at 6 p.m. Um, here at City Hall, you can join us uh, for an incredible concert um, tomorrow night. Uh, also, uh, I think it was mentioned earlier, the election is coming up on November 5th. You can register to vote here in City Hall or still online. Um, and if you're interested in working and being an emergency backup um, in, uh, election inspector, please come in, fill out an application, and we'd love to have you. Um, and with that, um, also someone mentioned um, um, priority and we will reach out um, and check with priority with the concerns that you're having. And if you can give your address um, to Ms. Homan, um, we can follow up with you um, to, to alleviate those issues. With that, Mayor, I can answer any questions you or council may have. Uh, Mr. Mayor, go ahead. I, I guess city manager would be the one to ask, ask this to. Um, the traffic survey that we're doing on Nine Mile Road, uh, let me list the question, then, you, then I'll give the floor to you. Why are we doing it? What are we going to do with it when we have it? And the decision that we make based upon the traffic survey that's being done now, would that make any difference if you did it in December or February when there's snow on the ground? Um, so there's going to be a, a traffic study based on um, Council's direction of the potential redesign of Nine Mile Road. So there's an exploration right now of potentially redesigning a section of Nine Mile Road um, to three lanes. Um, and so a part of doing that requires us to do an updated traffic study. Um, and so that traffic study will provide more information to the engineers as well as the um, individuals designing the road as well as the ones approving the design for the road at MDOT, Federal Highway Administration, to assist in making, and council, um, to assist in making that decision. Okay, that's what we put over about the other questions. Is there a cost? Or is they doing it for nothing? There is a cost, yes. Um, and I don't, it might be more of a Ryan question. I'm sure weather certainly impacts a traffic study, that. but yeah. I'm not sure how the snow would impact your your study. So, uh, during the winter, we typically don't do traffic counts during the winter months, especially when there's snow on the ground, just because snow plows uh, can tear up the equipment because you've got a hose running across the road uh, to do the traffic counts. So typically we would, we would not do that uh, work in the winter. We do have it scheduled right now to ha take place uh, next week, weather dependent. If it's raining as well, we usually do not. If there's rain in the forecast, we would not do that. But our intent is to have this traffic study done uh, roughly within the next month. And why? Because, yeah, why are we doing it? What, I mean, what, 
what effect will you getting the results of a traffic study do to your the nine mile it, road? It is a requirement if if the city's looking at doing a three lane design, it is a requirement of MDOT that a traffic study be done. Okay. And that study would be primarily between Schroeder and Kelly? Would be that's yes, that's correct. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Um, I uh, just wanted to mention, Ms. Walton, I checked the email links for myself and um, Ms. Pashadlik today. They're um, closer to being correct, but they still have to be corrected. Um, and I'll address that in my comments to, to let people know what, what's going on with that. So um, I think a backslash just has to be taken out to correct that. Uh, anything else from anyone else on council? All right, we'll move on to the finance director's report, Mr. Blom. Uh, yes, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, just want to let you know that the uh, loan for the uh, $20 million project, the loan's only $975,000, uh, closed last Thursday, and the project is now ready to move forward. I don't believe it's starting till February. Is that correct, Grant? Water main project? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, it may start here in October. Oh, okay. Looking to schedule a pre-construction meeting with the contractor here in the next couple of weeks, but it sounds like they want to get going on it as soon as possible. So. Okay. Yep. Well, either way, the loan is closed. The project is ready to go uh, through Eagle, and uh, we will see some new water main coming real soon. And that's all I have. All right. Any questions for the finance director? All right, Mr. Albright. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. Uh, today I attended a social media policy committee uh, meeting here at uh, City Hall. Uh, the committee has met, I believe, on four different occasions now, and they have been working hard on uh, uh, reviewing and revising uh, the city's social media policy. Um, the next meeting is going to be on September 17th, and I believe that the, uh, the committee intends on meeting one more time after that, uh, and then we'll be presenting a final product uh, for the council's consideration uh, probably sometime. Council is also in receipt of the uh, proposed adult use uh, marijuana ordinance. I know that uh, Council Member Curley had expressed an interest in uh, going into closed session at the uh, next meeting. Um, I would uh, also request that there is uh, some components of the proposed draft that I would like to speak to the Council with uh, uh, for attorney-client uh, privilege communication. Other than that confined uh, topic, rest of the ordinance then can certainly be discussed during, during an open meeting. And uh, council's in receipt of our monthly status report. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Um, I did get a chance to take a look at the what you sent out and, and read your email, so I see why some of that information could mirror a closed session. Yeah. So I'd be fine with putting a closed session on the next uh, agenda. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, uh, moving on to uh, new business item A, approval of resolutions 24-1988, 24, 1989, and 24-1890. Uh, Mr. Mayor, that should be 1990. I'm, my apologies. I was thinking that as I was reading it. <laughs> to commit uh, matching funds if awarded funding for road projects. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion? Sure, Mr. Mayor. I'll... Uh... Make a motion on the first one. Uh, move to approve resolution number 24-1988 and commit matching funds of 18.15% if awarded funding for the reconstruction of Nine Mile Road between Kelly and Interstate 94 and further authorize the city manager to execute all necessary documents necessary for the above. Is there support? Support. Please call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico. Yes. Councilmember Shadlick? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember Curley? Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. All right. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion for 24 1989? Sure. Mr. Mayor, I'll move. We approve resolution number 24 1989 and commit matching funds of 18.15% if awarded funding for the reconstruction of Topher from Kelly Road to Beaconsfield Avenue and further authorize the city manager to execute all necessary documents for the above. Or, All right. Please call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Curley? Yes. 
Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Shadlick? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. All right, and one left for uh, 24 1990. I would move that we uh, approve the resolution number 24 1990 and commit matching funds of 37.5% if awarded funding for the heavy rehabilitation of 10 Mile Road, Flox Avenue to Kelly Road and further authorize the city manager to execute all documents necessary. I will uh, second that, but can I ask a few questions on this one? Or I guess, can we just review this one briefly first and then I guess I'll probably have a question. <laughs> Ms. Walton. Did you, oh, did you want to just kind of explain? Yeah, because I think, yeah, I guess a brief explanation would be good first and then I think I'll have a couple Would questions. you be able to speak to it or should I take that over to? <clears throat> Mr. Kern? Yep, I can do that. Uh, so uh, we met with Macomb County Department of Roads roughly three, four months ago to talk about the 10-mile road project and what could potentially be done for improvements on the 10-mile road project. Um, at that time, it was discussed that uh, there was, a, with the call for projects on the next transportation improvement plan that we could potentially apply with the county and with the city of Roseville as well to rehabil rehabilitate 10-mile road from Hayes to Kelly. Since that time, uh, the city has received a state earmark uh, from Hayes to Phlox to reconstruct that portion. So we're looking at now applying for federal aid funding to rehabilitate, do a heavy rehabilitation from 10 Mile Road from Phlox to Kelly, which would basically involve a milling and resurfacing of that street, new curb and gutter where needed, uh, side street returns, driveway approaches uh, would all be new, handicap ramps took 88 compliance. Um, of that uh, typical Macomb County project with 10 Mile being under the jurisdiction of Macomb County is typical that any matching funds of the county would, would uh, fund 50% of the matching funds and that would be up to the community that that road is in to also participate with it being uh, City of East Point and City of Roseville. Half the distance it's East Point on both sides. East Point on the south side Roseville on the north side just east of Grash it over to Kelly. So therefore, of the 18.15% match that's required on the project, Macomb County would fund 50% of that match, East Point would fund 37.5%, and the City of Roseville 12.5% of the match if the project were to move forward. Um, again, so 81.85 would be covered under uh, federal aid assistance. I know the condition of 10 Mile Road is in very poor condition, so this is, this is definitely a very good opportunity to potentially get this road rehabilitated. You know what, I, and I, I missed this until you were uh, had said it a couple times. Um, shouldn't this be a reconstruction, not a heavy rehabilitation? That's what we received funding from. So the, from the, the state. So the section of the earmark uh, from Hayes to Flox is definitely going to be a full reconstruct. So that okay. section would be new aggregate base, new road. I mean, everything would be torn out, new aggregate base, new roadway. That's definitely the worst section of Ten Mile Road by far. I mean, the majority of Ten Mile is not in that good of condition, but that section is by far that's too far gone. To, be rehabilitated. We did have the discussion as far as the remaining section from Flocks to Kelly. We did discuss that with the county whether you know whether it should be reconstructed or it should be a heavy rehabilitation. It is the county's. Uh, it is the county's roadway. It is their jurisdiction. It is their recommendation based upon their analysis that a heavy rehabilitation would suffice for that section. So I guess that's the part, uh, yeah, that I have questions about. I, well, so I guess first of all. I probably probably be nice to have a little summary of this, but I guess from like I'm just pulling up Google Maps here. From well, I guess let's talk about Hayes to Flox just for a second again. So it looks like, and actually from maybe Hayes to Gratiot, right? The the two outer lanes are concrete, and then there's asphalt over like the two middle, like the two inside lanes, right? I think that's, that's correct. correct for the whole section. Yes, from Hayes to crash it so then of course when we're um, reconstructing Hayes to Flox it's just gonna be all concrete that's correct um, so then I guess yeah my concern or I mean I guess it's similar to what I say for side streets too especially looking at the um, you know how the asphalt looks right now if we kind of do the same you know if we do the, the resurfacing from Flox to Gratiot, I'm concerned in another, you know, 20 years, the road's just gonna look 
like it does here again, <coughs> as opposed to, you know, concrete, we've been doing a better job fixing that. It's easier to fix portions of it, maintain it over a longer period of time. Um, the county's not interested in doing a project like that, or can we even do a smaller project and do that? Or was there any discussions about that? And we did, I mean, we talked about all the different scenarios along 10 mile road. Um, and we did, you know, we did talk about reconstruction. Obviously that's what we would like to see as a reconstruction. Uh, like you mentioned, it, it definitely lasts longer, you know, with the asphalt resurfacing within 20 years, you're looking at doing improvements again. But uh, yeah, the county was not interested in doing a full reconstruction, unfortunately, in that section. Um, and then so from Gratiot, so if, yeah, so uh, Flocks to Gratiot is the two outer lanes concrete to enter our asphalt cap. Then from Gratiot all the way to Kelly's all concrete, right? I think so. Uh, Gratiot to Kelly is concrete with an asphalt cap. Oh, there is uh, yep. still asphalt. Yes. In the two middle lanes still. Correct. Yeah, it must just be in a little better condition. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot better condition. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> like, same day. It'd be, uh, it'd be obvious otherwise, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so then if, and I guess I just want to be clear, I understand it too. So then if we do what is proposed here, um, it'd still be concrete on the t outer lanes and asphalt cap on the middle lanes, or would it be the whole roadway? That's my understanding, is that the concrete would remain, the patching would be done where necessary, but where there's asphalt, that asphalt would be removed and replaced. Are there other roads that have like, or I don't know, I didn't think about this question until just now, that are like part asphalt, part concrete? Just seems it's strange. I'm guessing we did it because the two inner lanes were a lot worse condition at one point than the two outer lanes? I'm not, you know, I'm not sure of the history of 10 Mile and why that was done that way, whether that was done, you know, at one point that was a two lane road. So I don't know whether when it was widened, it was done that way. I'm not sure. I mean, it's very rare to say, you do see that once in a while, but it's pretty rare to find a road that's half concrete and half asphalt. But I, I don't know the history of why that took place on 10 Mile. I just think, I guess, council, my thoughts are if we, if we did it concrete now, the, the county can, doesn't need to worry about East Point for a long time. This is the only road, <laughs> you know, that, that's a county road. So if we do it now, it'd be a long time maybe before we'd have to come back. And of course, I'm just looking down the road, you know, again, like we do with the side streets, uh, it should last a lot longer. Um, I don't know, I, I'm not feeling too positive about this this third uh, road project. Uh, who ta does, does the county tactically submit the application and they just include the resolution from essentially us? Uh, we are submit, the county asks us to submit the application, but ultimately it'll be the county's decision whether the project would move forward or not. Based upon the amount, based upon the available funding through the federal aid for the next three years. I mean, do you have any reason to think if, if we just said, well, apply for a full reconstruct, if, if we got earmarked for that, that they would not do the project? It's, it's very possible. I guess we could have that discussion with the county, or we could just apply to do a full reconstruct. But yeah, you would risk potentially not, risk the project not moving forward. When do we have to have a, can we the just say the applications are due September 29th, so we could table it to the next meeting. Well, we can submit the other two applications right away, but we can do this this last one and you know, discuss it again yeah. at the September 17th meeting. Uh, Ms. Walton, uh, I think made a good suggestion. We might be able to just change the like, language to say something like um, identify uh, sorry, where was this? Uh, to complete um, a full reconstruction or heavy rehabil rehabilitation or something like that, just we add, can like, definitely so do that. The resolution is um, flexible, um, and maybe identify that uh, full reconstruct is is preferred. preferable. Yeah. Yeah, we could definitely do that. <clears throat> 
What happens if one of the two cities does not approve a resolution? I know that our, our staff that works with the city of Roseville has discussed the project with the city of Roseville and they're in favor of doing, moving forward with the project too with their match as well. So it's that, as far as I know with the heavy rehab, but. Say they weren't in favor of it. Say they, they voted no, we'll say, not East Point. Like. If they voted no, I guess, I mean, you could still move forward with the section from Flox to Gratiot, since that's East Point on both sides, that, that section could still be considered. But yeah, if Roseville decided to opt out and not apply for it, then the section from Gratiot to Kelly would not move forward. So I'm gonna make a, oh, there's already a motion, I'm sorry. Uh, well, um, sure, I guess uh, I would ask that the uh, resolution just be amended to say uh, cost to complete a full reconstruction, um, parentheses preferred, or a heavy rehabilitation. I think just inserting that in the third paragraph would cover it. You said you'd make that your motion? Yes. Is there still a second? Second. And I guess that way you can talk to Roseville and, you know. Yep, we can do that. Figure yes. out what we can do. Yep, we can definitely do that. All right. Uh, any other discussion? Yeah. So my original was um, Council Member Shadley, the motion, and Council Member DeMonico, the support, the second. So are we changing that? Well, we, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I, I sort of like the idea, but I guess we can either, I'm fine with it being uh, Ms. Peshadlik for the motion, Mr. Curley for the, the second, or we can vote an amendment, which we rarely, if like, ever do. I know, that's how it should <laughs> be done, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just to make things simpler, I think, why don't we? that last motion and then Councilwoman Pashadlik and is the motion and um, Councilman Curley for the second. It's fine with me. Okay. All right. All right. Please call. Yes. Council Please Council call the roll. Councilman Pashadlik. Yes. Councilman Curley. Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld. Yes. Councilmember Baker. Yes. Councilmember DeMonico. No. All right, moving on to uh, item B, uh, 2024 Joint and Crack Ceiling Program Contract. Did anyone want to make a motion? Mr. Mayor, I'll move we award the 2024 Joint and Crack Ceiling Program Contract to Michigan Joint Ceiling Incorporated in the amount of $175,450 and authorize the city manager to execute all necessary contracts. A second. All right, please call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember Shadlick? Yes. Councilmember Curley? Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Uh, we removed item C, so moving on to item D, the 2024 to 2026 assessing services contract. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I would move to award the 2024 to 2026 assessing service contract to Assessment Administration Services, LLC, and further authorize the city manager to execute all documents necessary for the above. Second that. I'll second that. All right. Uh, is there any comments or questions on this one? Please call the roll. Councilmember Curley? Yes. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Shadlick? Yes. Uh, moving on to item E, approval of the special event application, Turkey Giveaway, November 23rd, 2024. Mr. Mayor, I'll motion we approve the special event application for CNS Healthcare on November 23rd, 2024. I would second that with a, uh, with a comment. Go ahead. Okay, there, there are probably a lot of people, well, some in here and certainly a lot of people out there are going to just hear the motion to approve a special application. 
and they may, in fact, need a turkey. So let me tell you where it's at. It's going to be at the CNS Healthcare on Kelly Road, 21331, 21331 in East Point. And um, our document doesn't show the time, but you can go over there early morning probably. But uh, that's free turkey. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Uh, do you want to comment? I just noticed that the, ap the um, applicant said 10 a.m. 10 a.m. It's 10 a.m., folks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Please call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Curley? Yes. <laughs> Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Shadlick? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. All right. Item F, uh, approval of the reappointment to the uh, Downtown Development Authority Board. Would anyone like to make a motion? Yes, I move that we would uh, reappoint William Transit to the Downtown Development Authority for a term that expires September 1st, 2028. Sir Sport. I'll second that. Okay, did anyone have any comments? Please call the roll. Council member. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Shadlick? Yes. Councilmember Curley? Yes. Great. Payrolls and bills. Would anyone like to make a motion? Yes. I move that we pay the bills in the amount of $2,317,713.27. I'll second that. All right. Any questions about the payroll? Please call the roll. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Shadlick? Yes. Councilmember Curley? Yes. All right, moving on to the second hearing of the public. The second hearing of the public is now open. Would anyone wish to be heard? Anyone wish to be heard? Um, hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Taquan Foster. Um, I'm a resident, also a business owner at East Point. Um, as far as the research thing with Nine Mile, well, I know you guys said it'd be conducted and finished within like the next month. Um, that's is that correct, Ryan? Well, he's uh, it's he can't respond now, but during okay. The I, I just wanted to know: Will this thing be like as far as my business and between Cushing and Rain? Will we have like any updated information before the year is out? That's that's all that I ask. Okay. Would anyone else wish to be heard? I'm going to bang the gavel if you guys are just going to wave at each other. <laughs> I am having a very hard time that yeah, you are conducting a survey, a road survey, when school's not in session fully, it's not winter time. It's summertime, a lot of families are not in town. The three mile stretch is a joke to me. But if you want to get it a correct, if you're going to spend money on this, our taxpayer money, I believe you should do this at least in November. So we get an accurate seeing of what's happening. Another thing that's been brought in, I have been trying since 2018 to get proper signage at Eaton Academy. I lived across the street from St. Veronica's. I love my class in porch. I watched my oldest nine-year-old daughter got hit by a car landing on the roof. Now that the changes with signage, parking on tow for everything has changed. But I don't understand MDOT in Macomb County Road being brought into this. Hi, Lisa. This is so-and-so at Macomb County Department of Roads. I did contact at this point. They will be getting back in touch with you. We do not have jurisdiction, and they are aware that the that Glander is under their jurisdiction. MDOT and the Macomb County Road Commission 
have no jurisdiction under the streets in East Point. Yes, connecting roads to other cities, but not Nine Mile. Turn around on Kelly. That's not MDOT, and that's not the Road Commission. I have it here, and I have it on my other phone from MDOT. So, I don't want to argue, but when MDOT, and I'm there in person, and they tell me that it's up to East Point to do their own maintenance on the roads and their own mapping of the roads, and it has nothing to do with the state, MDOT, or the Macomb County Road Commission. Who's telling the truth here? I have this call that says Miss Walton was called, and Darren Bellucci, who's been telling me since 218, I can't go throwing up signs wherever I want. I can't put a stop sign by a school. <laughs> Where else does a stop sign belong? So you have 30 seconds. I'm just saying I have documentation. I've done my homework that I don't need to do. But you know what? I don't want to see another nine year old end up on the hood of a car like my daughter did. So please get the proper signage, which still is not there. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, so this is ridiculous. After my comments during the first period, um, I just emailed the security clips. The nuisance tenants next door are trespassing on my property while we are in a council meeting. Again, I have a no trespassing sign in clear view. I have security cameras. This is beyond ridiculous. There's no excuse for this. Nothing is being done to hold any of these nuisance tenants accountable. There are hardly any homeowners left on my block. There's seven of us left. I just talked to two neighbors last night. They're fed up. They're looking to move. There's a third homeowner fed up looking to move because you have nuisance tenants running roughshod over the block. This has been going on for far too long. The cops have abandoned our block and there's no excuse for it. This has to stop. So I wanna know who is going to call dispatch because I'm sick and tired of all this retaliation BS. I want officers out there now. There's no excuse for them trespassing on my property. They already have charges against them. This is just beyond stupid. And so who's gonna take action? That's what I want to know, because this trespass needs to stop. That sign is not a decoration piece. This, I, I don't even know what to tell you. All I know is if it were any of you sitting here and this was happening to you, all you'd have to do is make one phone call and that would end all of it. They wouldn't even think about making any sarcastic, condescending, minutes. patronizing remarks towards you. They wouldn't even think about violating the code of ethics. They wouldn't even think about behaving in such a deplorable manner. I'm tired of the excuses. I don't work for so-and-so. Yeah, well, you work for the taxpayers. We pay our taxes pay the salaries of public servants, and they need Thank to you. conduct themselves in a professional manner. Okay. 
Anyone else wish to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing of the public is closed. We'll move on to mayor and council reports. We'll start with uh, Councilman Baker. Thank you. Um, very efficiently run meeting. Um, in regards to the problems with neighbors um, and police, uh, I've been fortunate to have good experiences with the police personally. Um, I don't have any special pull to make us a phone call. I don't have any pull with anybody. Um, if there's an issue, you know, I believe in trying to talk to my neighbors. If I can't, then there are steps in place that I would follow to try to resolve those matters. Um, you know, and hopefully that there's, there's something that some resolution for you. Um, but, um, yeah, as, as far as, uh, ever having to call the police, I've called upon them maybe in almost 20 years, uh, probably about two or three times and they've come out and made sure that all matters were peaceable. And, uh, so I, I, you know, hope that you find that resolution, uh, with you and your neighbors beyond that. That is all I have. All right. Uh, Councilman Curley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we all know we have a presidential election coming up very shortly. And from my recollection, I, I first voted for John Kennedy. That's how old I am. And I don't remember our country being so divided and so angry at one another. There, you know, there was a time when you could talk to somebody else that's going to vote for the other person and you'd have a cup of coffee or a beer and say, oh, okay. So that's not going to happen this time. So Here's what's not going to happen. There's not going to be a big bolt of lightning that comes down and either strikes the people who voted for the person that lost or strikes the people for the person who won. November 6th, the election is going to be over. And we have to go back to our neighbors and to our friends and even to our own relatives, our sister and brother and whatever. So I guess I'm asking you to really think hard that uh, you have a right to your opinion, you have a right to the way you want to vote, and but when the election is over, wow, this this country has got to, they got to come together. And I'm going to, Mr. Mayor, I, I may be out of order, but I'm going to stick my neck out again uh, for the resident that was up here and said that the police have abandoned Brittany. The police haven't abandoned anything. You may disagree with what they do, but our police department is diligent on every block in this city. I've been here 1964. I've never called the police. I don't know. I'd pat myself on the back for that. I don't know. But trust me, when I say that our police department has not abandoned anything in our city. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Pashabak. Um, I'd also like to uh, echo those sentiments about the police department. Um, I'm sorry that you're experiencing those issues, Karen. I'm sure that's very difficult to deal with on a day to day basis living next door to that. Um, however, I, I can't find all fault with the police department. I, I do appreciate the work that they do. I um, personally um, have had experience with uh, East Point Police Department. Um, as a matter of fact, I uh, credit them for saving my son's life last year. If it weren't, if it weren't for them. <clears throat> Uh, Councilman DeMonico. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I hope um, we can uh, get a good resolution on um, your issue with your neighbors, Ms. Maragia, and I think, yeah, it's going to hopefully just take some more conversations, I guess, but, um, but yeah. Um, and uh, Mr. Foster, um, 
the thing we were talking about earlier was just specifically the traffic study that will be like the next month. I am hoping personally we can figure out, and I know there's still time, this parking issue with not only his property, like his uh, stretch of properties there, but also the ones by um, East Detroit Bakery and uh, across the street from there. I think we've got one third of the solutions, but the other two um, I think we still need to figure out. Um, but that's my hope, at least. Um, and Miss Lisa, I think I'm not sure of your last name, sorry. <laughs> Eber, all right, Miss Eber. Um, I think this, the sign thing, I think that um, we're both right here. I think there's just a little more nuance to it where I think our DPW director is saying he can't just place a stop sign somewhere. He needs someone else to approve it, like the city council, or well, I believe it's us to change signs like that. I guess it's been a very long time. Um, him or the police department, as far as I understand, unless Miss Waltner, our police chief, yeah, he might not know what I just said. <laughs> uh, no, otherwise, I. But I, I think we're both right. Like M. Dot and the county saying it's up to us is correct, but also uh, Mr. Paolucci can't just put up a stop sign uh, if he wants. So, I, so hopefully we can talk about that more too and figure that out. Um, the uh, back to school event the, that was thrown at the VFW was very nice. Uh, lots of kids came and um, got uh, some school supplies and all that. So I'd like to thank Shelly Chopa and the rest of the VFW and anybody else that volunteered there and uh, helped out. That was a very nice event. Uh, nice to see uh, something positive like that in the community. And I uh, hope everyone had a great Labor Day weekend. And then as uh, um, Ms. Walton said earlier, hopefully you make it out to the DDA Summer Concert Series tomorrow at uh, City Hall, 6 p.m., and, and next week at 6 p.m. also. Right, I think still that one's not rescheduled. Okay, yep, so tomorrow and next week uh, on Wednesday. So uh, that's all, Mr. Mayor. All right. Do you want me to? Okay. <laughs> at any rate, I, I did want to thank the police for um, their involvement. Uh, they did help me out during a very difficult time last year. And I do credit them for saving my son's life. Um, so I do, there, I do see the good that's done in the department um, for all the faults that anyone has. It's, it's good and bad and everything, so you have to look at it that way. Secondly, I'd like to apologize to those who may have emailed me and not received a response. It uh, came to my attention. My cat alluded to it earlier. It came to my attention through Senator Kleinfeld that uh, there's a glitch within the system. So if you are on the website and you go to email me, um, it, it doesn't go to me, it goes to Rob. <laughs> so I apologize if I didn't respond. Um, and then lastly, I uh, also wanted to mention about 10 Mile Road. Uh, that particular area of 10 Mile Road from Hayes to Gratiot is deplorable. Just best way to word it, it's deplorable. It really needs to be done. I'm grateful that we have the funding to flex. Um, but I felt that anything to be done from Flax to uh, Kelly would be beneficial. Just something would be better than nothing because it does need some work. And that's all I have. Hey, thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, yes, I think when uh, Councilwoman uh, Pachadlik uh, and I joined council and our emails were added to the website, the link that sends, if you click it to try to send us an email, it just has an error in it, um, but we're working on fixing that. So if you are emailing us, um, mine is mkleinfeld at uh, eastpointcity.org um, and M. Pashadlik, I'm not going to try to spell it, but <laughs> um, uh, it's it's yeah. <laughs> um, so just pay, pay attention to the actual email that ends up in your email address to make sure, and if it bounces back, um, it's because it's, it's not in there correctly. Um, but we should have that fixed shortly. And uh, I was going to mention um, kind of a props to the DPW. I know we've had a lot of squares uh, replaced for the lead lines recently. I'm sure some people are noticing that they're coming out and marking cement that's really just been poured for those repairs. Um, there, my understanding is uh, what was put in is not up to standard. And so we are going back 
pretty much immediately and getting them removed and report under warranty so the city's not paying for it, the contractor who did it is. So um, they're keeping an eye on the work that's being done because it should last when they pour cement. So uh, that's all I have. I'll entertain them. So motion. moved. Uh, Mayor, <laughs> um, real quickly, oh, if I may. I still get um, my cell moved, though. So for all the emails that got forwarded to me, I started, I, I got mostly uh, Mayor Kleinfeld's. And I would forward them, and then after a while I said, I must be getting blank carbon copied on them. And it was later that I found out, like literally after the last meeting, I think maybe a few days, that he that told me what happened. So if something didn't get forwarded, it's because I thought that I was blank carbon copied on it. Um, because, I, you know, it's happened before, and I know some people have come up and said, hey, I've emailed all of you. So it, it just kind of ran in conjunction with, you know, the glitch and what I thought was going on. So I don't want anybody to think I'm hoarding emails or something. <laughs> no, I don't think any of us thought that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so. cross that off. All right, uh, Harvey made a motion. Who would like to? I'll second that. All right, <laughs> please call the roll. Councilmember yes. Curley. Councilmember DeMonico. Yes. Councilmember Shadlick. Yes. Councilmember Baker. Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld. Yes, meeting adjourned at 8, 11 p.m.